Hello world and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Do you need to track devices, packages, trucks, people, customers, something? Do you want to track them in real time? And not to worry about scale, how many devices you have or customers are using your service? If that's the case, maybe you want to continue watching this video. Creating software that is able to track devices, let's call devices anything you want to track, in real time can be costly. It costs a lot of time to build that type of uh, software. It's hard to scale. Security and privacy is a very important concern because those devices can be very sensitive for your customers. They can be their mobile phone or there can be their car or something that shows where they are located. So you really need to care about privacy. What if I told you that there is a service that can help you with the tracking of these devices? That can track devices in real time without really worrying about scale and with the AWS concern about security and privacy in mind so you know your customer data is safe. This service is called the Amazon Location Service and I talk about it in a couple of videos back when I show you how to create an application that can display a map and you can search on it. So that was a very simple web application that we were using Amplify and we were basically just showing a map. In this video I want to start from there, from a very simple application that shows a map and add one more layer to it. The ability to display the tracking information of your customers, devices, or whatever you're tracking. So, first let's go to the console and see how you can add trackers into your application. And then let's go and see how we can do the website for displaying this real-time application and how everything works. So, let's go to the console. So we are starting our journey in the location services where we stopped in this video. I recommend you to go and check it out because there I share what is the location services and I also talk on how to create the map and all those, those things. So now we want to go and create a new tracker. So a tracker is a resource that you can connect devices to and that tracker can receive location information. So you can have one tracker and as many devices as you need. So when we create a new tracker, the only thing you need to define is the name for the tracker and that's kind of it. Then you will be able to query for the position of the history of the different devices that are in the tracker and you can see what uh, all the information of each of the devices that have shared with the tracker. And later on, we will be seeing how the tracker can be connected to a geofencing to alert you on something, but that's for next video. So we created the tracker, we just put a name, and then we need to go and edit our IAM policy. So in the previous video, I was using an authenticated role to access this uh, application, so to show the map and to do the search. In this one, I will be doing exactly the same, but instead of using an authenticated guest, I will be doing it on an authenticated guest because tracking cannot be accessed without being logged in. So that's something you need to have in mind. If you want to display the history of a device from this tracker SDK, you will need to have a user that is logged in with Amplify. So edit the policy of the authenticated role. And you can find the policy of the authenticated role the same way that you find the policy of the unauthenticated role in that video. I will show you the policies that you need to add here. So they're free. Uh, in the previous episode, I just give you a star. And I told you, you can do anything on the geo um, category. Now I want to be um, more conscious on security and I will give you three policies. The first one is the one to access the map. That is uh, this one and you can just basically get it and put your account number and your uh, map name. The second one is to be able to access the index, the search index. And the third one is to be able to access the tracker. So these are the three policies that you need in your authenticated application in order 
to uh, do this. So now what we want to do in our website, we need to be logged in. And then I want to add a button that says track. So whenever I click that button, it starts showing me the real time information of our device. We could do it basically when it's load, but it's just too much. So I just added this button so it enables it in that moment. So in order to do that, we can go to the code and we can add a couple of things into our application. The code, as always, is available in GitHub, so you can check the description box of this video where the code is. The first thing we need to do is to define the constants on the top of the uh, application.js. Again, we are working on one application.js file. I don't want to use components, it's too much work. But if you're doing this for production, maybe you need to have um, different components and different uh, modules for all these things. But for now, we have all the constants on the top where you can change them to the one that are um, from your application. And you can see that there is the tracker name and the device ID. The tracker name is the one that we just created. The device ID, this could even be a text box in your website where you can put the tracking number or something like that or the name of the device. Uh, here, I just given one device ID arbitrarily from the website. This is just for demo purpose. In your case, you might have a lot of devices, so you might want to make this editable. So then the next thing we are going to see is the tracker uh, component that is just a button because we are uh, just displaying a button, but we could have also the box text uh, input as well if we need there. And then in our application component, you can see there that we have a new array called dev post uh, markers. And that will be an array with all the position of the device, basically when we start getting it from the SDK. Then you will see a method called use interval, and that's every 30 seconds to get the device position. So this, uh, I will show it to you in a second, is a class that will call uh, some method that we are passing in this callback, this get device position, but it could be anything every uh, set amount of time. So this does a polling to the backend every X amount of seconds. You could do this in multiple ways. You can put this uh, API behind the WebSocket or put it with GraphQL or do something else. But in this case, because I want to not build any server code, I just wanted to use my client, I'm polling every 30 seconds. And because the device is sending information as minimum every 30 seconds, it doesn't make sense to have it faster. So this is just for the demo purpose. And then we have this method called get device position that is getting called every 30 seconds. The first thing is we empty this uh, array with the markers, with the uh, historical information that we are keeping. So we start always from an empty array. And then I will be calling the client get device position history with these parameters, the device ID that we specify on the top of the application.js or you got from uh, your user and then the tracker name that is the tracker that we just created. And then you need to give a start time and an end time. The end time is now. The start time, you can define it. It can be one year ago, one day ago, whatever. And then we call the client and we get a list of positions and with those positions, then we can populate our mm, markers that we are going to display in the screen. We need the index to know in which position, we need the latitude and we need the longitude. And I also like to set the viewport to the last point. So every 30 seconds, the screen moves a little bit. So if the you kind of move with the, the point then we have the trackers marker, and this is a little component that will be drawing the little points in the map. So we pass the index, we pass the longitude, we pass the latitude, and it knows where to draw it in the map. And we are using this pin component that is drawing a little pin in uh, red with some text that is the index basically in our screen. And then I'm calling these tracker markers inside the uh, map, the React map GL. And basically that's the whole thing. It can have as many markers as we have, as we can, and, and we just get them from there. So this is a very simple piece of code. 
So now I want to show you these two helper um, modules that I'm using, that is the pin.js. Uh, Basically it's an SVG uh, drawing with some text that I'm passing and some kind of size and that's kind of it. And then the set interval that is this function that helps me to call a function every certain period of time. Uh, you can get this on the internet. There's a million examples on how to do it. Now, if we go back to our website, I press track and nothing will happen because our device is not sending data because this is a demo. So how I make my device to send data? That's what we are going to work on now. And this you can do from your client application, you can do from your IoT, you can do it as an example like I'm doing. You can do it from wherever you feel that you need to do it. Basically, I will be using the AWS CLI to send tracking information to the location service. So then the location service can um, get this tracker information and display it in my maps. So for that, I'm going to use this new service that was announced in reInvent, the AWS uh, Cloud Shell. So I don't need to install anything in my computer. I can use um, the location service CLI directly from the AWS Shell. So that's neat. So you don't need to worry about what is the version of AWS CLI you have in your computer. If you use the Cloud Shell, you're always getting the latest version. For doing this, I created my own script. So every 30 seconds it's sending uh, the location updated for one particular device and this is very arbitrary. I started with a fixed location, um, basically a longitude and a latitude and then I'm, every 30 seconds I'm increasing both dimensions on one and that's it and I'm sending that location. So it's very very arbitrary but you could do the same from, I don't know, a client application that is sending the coordinates that it gets from the GPS or an IoT that is sending the coordinates that it's getting from, again, the GPS of the device. The script is available also in the code, so you can go and check it out. You need to pass the tracker name and you also need to pass the device ID. And then when you call it, it goes forever and every 30 seconds it sends a message to the location service API using the CLI and then it waits and then it again. So the code is, is very, very simple. So now if we leave this code running for a while, we can uh, press the track button in the website and we can see what is going on. So then if we put this running with the tracker name, the device name, and we leave it running there, we can go back to the website, press the track in button, and we can see how the website updates itself with the real time information from the tracker. I'm speeding up this visualization because, well, getting to point 11 takes quite a long time, every 30 seconds, and I want you to get the idea on how this looks. This will be looking exactly the same for you. So if you leave it running, it will just get over Cairo and keep on going up. And in some point it will fail because look, latitude and longitude are not infinite. So don't leave it running for more <laughs> than an hour because it, it might break. But the idea here is to show you a working demo and you will not send location information like I'm sending. If this is in production, you will send it from a real device with real longitude and latitude. So this will not happen to you when you implement this in production. But I wanted to show you something uh, that is working end to end. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. In this video, we learn about tracking. We learn what the trackers are. We display real-time information in the website. We learn how to use the AWS SDK to get that information. We also learn how to use the AWS CLI to send tracking data from our clients to the location service and then from the location service to our client using the AWS SDK and everything without any servers involved. In the next video, we are going to see how to get notifications or how to do something when, for example, a customer is getting inside your store or a package is arriving to destination. We are going to learn how to know all those things and how to send messages. So I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!